Hello and welcome to Matt Parker's Math Solutions. I'm Matt Parker and the Math Solution this time is for the arranging cats and dogs puzzle, which may be my favorite name to one of our puzzles so far. This was the question where if you had 10 uh, kennels in a row and you're not allowed to put cats in consecutive like adjacent kennels how many ways can you arrange it if you have to fill it with cats and dogs we'll get back to the word and in a moment so the correct answer was 144 there are 144 different ways that you can do that we will show you exactly why in a moment but i want to flag up that uh now a contender for a joke of Matt Parker's Maths Puzzles, James sent in a catisfactory solution. Oh, wait, I'm getting word. We've been told that yes, that is the pun of the season. So we can now officially celebrate. There we go. Good job, James. There you are. So if we now look at the stats uh, behind this puzzle, how many people got 144? We had 1,184 correct answers sent in. Great work. Out of a total of just over 1,500. So that's pretty much three quarters of people who sent in answer got the correct answer. And uh, Oliver, who runs the database, uh, then went through and found the most common responses. And the correct answer, obviously the most common, followed by one fewer. And those are the people who we suspect did not include all dogs. Not the null solution, but the dog solution. So if you don't have any cats, if you've got a cat-free solution, um, you get 144. If you exclude that solution, you get 143. Uh, Zoe, who, it was her idea to run the puzzle this time. Um, when she was solving it, she'd made a note um, that you got the, the um, cat free solution. And so for those people, we're going to give you the correct points, like the correct solution points for this puzzle, but we're not gonna give you the speed points. We felt bad, because I used the word and, and he, strictly speaking, you could say, well, you yeah, said you have to use cats and dogs, not war, but I think the way it was worded, it was pretty clear that you had a range of cats and dogs that you could put in the kennels. So I want to—I don't want to super penalize, but you're not going to get speed points. You get the points for getting it right, but you're not going to get the points for being fast. That's what I'm saying. There you are. Okay, now to get into the solutions. Deanna, who goes through all the mathematics and puts together this presentation for me, they uh, commented they were very disappointed at the lack of pictures of cats and dogs. We had high, high hopes, although some people did go all out on emojis. There was a comment um, which was held for review. So well done. Someone pasted in all 144 solutions using cat and dog emojis onto my uh, YouTube second channel. And YouTube was like, that is not a legitimate comment. And so it was held for review. But I think it's excellent. Well done. Um, I will now set that um, to uh, be published. I'll authorize that one to go out. And other people too. So um, I made a quick note of some other ones we got in. Uh, Lee Smith emailed in something very similar and David Patterson uh, also did a thing with emojis and the um, David used hot dog emojis for the dogs. Great work, David. Well, those are some real solutions. Uh, Nick, uh, working with their offspring, worth mentioning, well done, Nick's offspring, they uh, did it in binary. So actually the whole puzzle, I could just say how many 10 digit binary numbers don't have two consecutive ones. Same puzzle, not as much fun. Not that you sent in any pictures of cats and dogs, honestly. Um, so that's what they did. They went through, and in fact, you could do it manually. You could do all, well, if you include the null case, all 1,024, and then just go through and take out all the ones with consecutive ones. So you could actually do this one the exhaustive way by hand. Because in the exhaustive, non-exhaustive coding by hand, two by two matrix, uh, this one could be solved in any one of those corners which I really like. So Nick did it uh, exhaustive by hand, which is really nice. Uh, Reviv did it by hand, but um, logically, maybe with a calculator to do the choosing. They worked out you got the number of kennels, you got the number of cats, you then work out the number of spaces you need 
based on the number of cats, which is one fewer than the number of cats. And so the number of places you can house the cats, you can work that out in terms of number of kennels, number of cats, and then you just put in every, you know what um, number of kennels is, that's 10, and so you put in every possible value for cats for which you get a reasonable answer out, and you do the choose function for how many ways you can then arrange them. And you add them all up and you get 144. If those numbers look familiar, the um, uh, Binky here noticed that they're in Pascal's triangle. Because Pascal's triangle, all about the choose function. Love it. I made a video about that like, goodness, years ago. It's like one of my earliest ones on my main channel. Um, anyway, so uh, this is great. And actually Binky noticed that, that because it's in Pascal's triangle, some of them link to like tetrahedral numbers and all these cool things. Really nice. Um, and links to last week's puzzle which is great. Oh, uh, more about that at the end of the video. Well, I might do the solution video for that one at some point. Um, so that was really nice. Uh, Harry did it with logic gates? Car. I'm a big fan. And then, so technically they could have just made this circuit and then used the circuit to solve it. They then simulated the circuit in code, but that's fine. Um, but that's the first logic gate solution I believe we've been sent in. Um, RQ Lexi here did a spreadsheet. Love a good spreadsheet. Thanks for joining in. Uh, Ethan, again, worked it out. This is by hand, clever. Um, they went through and they did the two base cases and they realized that if you've got a one digit case, so they done it in terms of binary, not in terms of kennels, you need to add a zero to it if you do it in, at the front. If you do it in the two um, uh, digit case, then you're adding on a one zero. And so, um, I think I got that right. Oh, the other way around. Meh. And then you, you build it up and then you get the Pascal, not the Pascal, just the, the Fibonacci-ness. Um, comes out, which is really nice. And they got 144 at the bottom. Oh, a few people did submit answers where they must have, they've stopped one Fibonacci short, um, which is a real shame. Oh well. Uh, coding mentions of the week. Uh, this is a determined by Deanna and Oliver. They voted for Marcus, who did it in Prolog, and Adina, who did it in JavaScript. Well done, you two. Programming mentions of the week. Uh, Sean did it an exhaustive-ish way in a document, and they had really nice pictures. So we thought they were worth a mention. There you go, great work. I like the fact they did it as a circle, but then they, they show the break, because you can solve the whole thing if you've got a circle of kennels, which is um, related to permutations on a loop that are very similar to um, in a line with a slight adjust. And uh, Felix here did this in LaTeX and then uh, animated how it all works. And once again, you see how uh, it gets very fibonacci -y very quickly. Great work, Felix. Oh, and they sent in there working with a table and everything else, and they read off the correct answer. Uh, Hans, just like their diagrams and their function, dog n equals dog n minus one, etc. Uh, and so they sent in those great, great pictures. I mean, we will we'll expect it much, much more. Our last picture, Oscar here. Um, I don't know if that's a Fibonacci spiral on the cat's tail. It might be a log, log spiral. Hmm. Anyway, uh, they noticed a fractal-like nature to the binary numbers when um, you plot, uh, color in the ones, or the cats. Sorry, the kennels. Color in the kennels for the cats, uh, and you get this cool fractal-like nature. So that's great, and so one of the reasons why I, I was a big fan of this puzzle when Zoe suggested it um, to use for this time around was you can solve it in so many different ways. And so that for me is what makes a good puzzle. You can go off and you can program and look at extreme cases. You can try and program it clever. You can program it exhaustive. You can do it by hand exhaustive. You can do it by hand clever. You can use a spreadsheet. Oh, that's probably a cube of options there. Uh, and so you can have a lot of fun with it. And so as always, thank you so much, everyone who gets involved in Matt Parker's Math Puzzles announcement for next week. The uh, next puzzle will be out. This will be now be the 18th puzzle will be coming out, the second last one. Actually, that's like a sub announcement. We're doing 19, in case you missed that previously. So there's two more to go, and that's the end of season one. And then uh, we might in 2021 do them occasionally, sporadically, just every now and then. We'll chuck out another one, or we'll have an interesting bit of maths, but we're not planning to do like a proper series. So we'll see what happens, uh, but we'll freeze the leaderboard um, after 19. I was meant to be away on holidays next week. And so James Grime of Singing Banana fame very kindly offered to do the puzzle. And he's already recorded the video. Good on James Grime. However, thanks to a suddenly announced lockdown here in the UK, 
I'm not going anywhere. So I'm not gonna be on holidays next week. I'm still gonna be around. However, James had already offered to do a video. It's a great puzzle. And so that's happening. So the second last one, James Grimes is gonna be our celebrity puzzle setter. And then I'll be back for the very last one, the 19th one. And then we're gonna take a break and, um, and whatnot. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do in a moment is I'm gonna carry straight on and I'm going to record the solution to the how old is Pascal's triangle puzzle because I tried recording it a new way when I did it last time and the audio was terrible. And I thought I tested it. I thought I did a sample test. I was using a, a combination of a camera and mic and stuff I haven't used before. It was awful. So I'll link to it. It's online, it's just it's unlisted, but I'm gonna redo that puzzle. So uh, thanks for watching this one. I'm glad you got involved. I'm now gonna film the other one. So now I'm filming it on my, my phone this time and I've just kind of, I've, I've got like this mic that goes in. But what I'm gonna to do to make it look a bit different is I've got this backdrop. I can lower this. So there's a white wall behind this. Is that clear? Here we go, excellent. Okay, so I got that there. So now, ah, oh, it looks completely different already. So I might put on a jacket too, just to, cause I'm gonna upload these like pretty much at the same time. So I like to make them look a little bit visually. Um, oh, I can put a pen. I'll put a pen behind my ear, how's that? Yes, right, so what I can do now is if something really amazing happens, and it's gonna be a pretty high bar, I can be like, now that, that there, that's amazing. And I'll, I'll save that up for a special occasion. Something I've learnt um, during the, shall I put this? You know what, I'm gonna put this, sorry, the audio's gonna be bad. Well, I'm gonna flip my mic up the other way. I don't know why I don't need the little wind song. Pop it on there, how's that? Here we go, okay. Uh, something I've learnt, uh, wearing a mask, if the elastic of the mask goes around my ears, it's no longer a stable place to put a pen. Like, it just, just the elastic, I didn't even notice this wearing it normally, but it's just enough to bend my ear out imperceivable amount, but it means I've no longer got the friction fit required um, to hold a pen stationary. Crazy times. Okay, yes, yeah, that mug. Okay, um, right, so let's bring up, where's my, ah, okay, there it is. Okay, right, so, um, okay, that can go back out. Okay, and, um, and we're good to go.